Do you have products you'd like to sell online? Let me show you how with JotForms Store Builder. Hey JotFormers, welcome back. I'm Kimberly. And like I mentioned, if you have products that you want to sell online, JotForms newest product store builder that is within our other feature apps can definitely help you do that, especially with no coding necessary. So I'm gonna show you a couple of options. I'm gonna go up to the top left where it says My Forms, and we are gonna choose My Apps. Then from here, again, the top left-hand corner, we're gonna click on Create an App, and you can see we have some different options. We have Start from Scratch, we have Use a Template, Clone an Existing App that you've already created, and then we have Build a Store. I'm gonna show you two different ways. So the most logical one is going to be to build a store. Whenever this populates, you can see that the product list element is already chosen. Over on the left-hand side, I'm gonna to choose to add an element. And then right down here, you can see where it says new and green product list. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it again so you can see what this looks like. So the great thing about this too is if you have different categories of products, you can have more than one product list. So we can see that this is very basic. We're pretty much starting from scratch. So let's go back to the app builder back to my apps. Let's do create an app again. And instead, let's use the template option. And I'm going to search for e-commerce. I'm going to preview this template and let's go ahead and use it. Now, one of the reasons why I love utilizing or looking at templates first is it really gets my creative juices flowing. So if we scroll down, we can see that this is utilizing the product list element. So in this one, we can see this week's trends. So people can literally click on this to add to their cart. And if we scroll down a little bit more, we can see what is on sale. So we have the use of the multiple product list. But let's say that I want to add a new product list. So we can either choose to do this on a new page or we can even choose add an element and we can drag it in exactly where we want it. So let's say we want it underneath the on sale section. So we can see over on the right hand side, we have some different options. We have the product settings. This is going to be where we edit or add our products. And then we have the store settings. This is going to be where we add our payment gateway. So let's go ahead and edit the products and make it our own. So I'm gonna click on the product settings and you can see we have the product name, which is $10 right over here. So if you want, we can click on the gear to delete this one. We can start completely fresh if we want to. So let's add a new product. And let's say this one is going to be uh, t-shirts. Good deal. From here, we can name our price. We'll just make this one a dollar for now. Next up is the description. So make sure you put something here to describe your product. If you had images for your product, you'll definitely want to add that so people get a visual idea of what they're going to be purchasing. But if we go back up to the top, this is kind of where the magic happens. So since, for example, we are selling t-shirts, we can add some different selectors in here. So the first one's going to be a quantity selector. So if we want to allow people to purchase more than one of something, we can turn this on. So we've just turned that on. And then we can also add product options. Because this is a t-shirt, we need to add different colors or different sizes. And one awesome thing about this is JotForm automatically is going to do that for you. So let's say we are going to make different sizes. And so instead of doing this ourselves, we can choose from this drop down of presets and we can see t-shirt size. And then we have all of the available options. Now, if we want to get rid of something, let's say we're not offering extra small, we can go ahead and backspace that out and it'll delete it for us. If we want to add a new option, we can. So let's say we want to add in 4X, add, good to go. We can go ahead and go back. Now let's say we have different color shirt options. I'm gonna go ahead and add another product option. This is gonna be color. And then again, we can choose the color option. And if we need to, again, delete any of these or if we need to add a new one, we can do that as well, perfect. All right, so you can see that we have 10 options for quantity. We have seven shirt options and we have six color options. So now we can go back to basic we can scroll down and go back and we can see this t-shirt option. Now that is just one product example. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to add in as many products as you have to sell. You can make this really fit what you're looking for for your business. But next up, let's go ahead and look at the store settings. So if I X out of here, we can see that this element is not chosen. So the store settings on the side is not there, but we do see it over on the top right. So if you wanna click on it here, you can, or we can choose this, it'll populate. It's going to be the same store settings. Now from here, this is where we can add our favorite payment gateway. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on add payment integration. And from here, you can see all the ones that are available. If you'd like to search, you can definitely do that as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and choose square for this. 
and I'm gonna connect to Square. And with this, we can also choose to show Apple and Google Pay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. I'm gonna click Save. Then if you scroll down a little bit further, you can see that we have some customer information that you can turn off or on. I think all of those are perfect. So I think we are good to go. If for some reason that you need to change or edit your payment gateway, all you have to do is just click on either the magic wand or if you wanna change it to a different payment gateway, maybe PayPal, you would do this. Or if you wanna delete it altogether, you can do that as well. So let me go up to the top, let's hit publish. And we're gonna open in a new tab. And if I remember correctly, we added our product list onto the sale page. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up here where it says huge sale. And here is our t-shirt. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the t-shirt and we can see the quantity selector. So let's say I, I want two. And then we also get to choose the color. I'm gonna go ahead and choose pink. That's the one that we chose. And then we also get to choose the size where we added the 4XL. And that is how we do that. I'm gonna go ahead and add to cart. And also other things you can do is your users can favorite products as well. Pretty neat. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up to my cart and I can also click on the favorites tab to see the items that I favorited. And if I decide in that moment I wanna to add to cart, I can click add to cart here as well. But let's go ahead and let's click continue and see what this checkout process looks like for your users. I'm gonna to proceed to pay. And you can see here that I have those different options. I'm currently not in Safari. That's why the Apple Pay is not showing up. And if I wanna use my credit card, I can. Good deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and click order $2. And we are good to go. Now as a consumer, I can use this right here where it says my previous orders. I can click here. I can come here within job form and I can see my order history. I'll be able to see my entire history over here on the left-hand side, but I can have my receipt here and I can see exactly what I have purchased from you. Even if your users come back to the app, so for example, like this, and I click on my profile picture, I can see previous orders and it brings us back to that same space. But let's take a look at what it looks like on your end within JotForm. This will allow you to keep all of your order processing in the same place. So I'm back in the builder. Up in the top left-hand corner, I'm gonna choose Tables. And here we get an idea of what is going on. So I can see the app that they ordered through. I have the customer's name, their email, and exactly what they ordered. And if I want to, I can click on this tag and I get an overview of exactly what it was that they ordered. And another nice thing about this is if you are utilizing this with maybe other people or you want to send your customer another email or maybe you want to send this data externally to another website, all you have to do is just add a column, which is really nice. So we're gonna add a button. Let's say we wanna send them another email, we can do that. We'll call this send email. We'll choose next. And if we wanna create an email, we can do that specifically for this. For this example, I'm just gonna go ahead and choose this notification email so you can see what this looks like. And then we have a send email button. So when we get this order in, maybe you wanna send them a thank you or something specific outside of that autoresponder, you just have to come here and click send email. But let's say you wanna send this data somewhere else. We can choose add again. We're gonna do buttons, send data to other apps, and then you get to choose where you want to send this data to. So for example, ClickUp is one that's pretty popular. You can choose ClickUp, Google Drive, Dropbox, Monday.com, Slack, wherever it is that you are communicating with other people within your team, and you can set it up that way. It's as simple as that. So if you have any questions about utilizing JotForm Store Builder to sell your products, please let us know, and I'll see you next time.